By now you should be all bunkered down, your restaurant must be closed, and now you must be pulling your hair out thinking about how you can survive to the next month. That's the reason why we're shooting today's video to make sure that you are the most equipped and most prepared in order for you to survive this whole coronavirus. Today we're going to be talking about the seven ways that you're going to be able to survive this coronavirus. And these are the things that I'm putting in place for my clients. These are the things that I'm recommending to my colleagues, my friends, everyone. And some of them are actually able to turn things around because they're able to implement these seven different tips. Hey guys, it's Wilson here, owner of Multiple Seven Figure Business, serial entrepreneur. If you guys are looking in building a small business or if you're thinking about building a restaurant of your dreams, make sure you subscribe along the journey because I'm gonna be sharing with you all the experiences that I have, the success, the failures, everything, so then that way you can learn from it and to be able to build your own dream business. If you're affected by any means from this coronavirus, make sure you guys comment yes in the section below and describe what situation you're in. So without further ado, let's dive into the seven ways that you can survive this coronavirus outbreak. The first way is to check with your government because they have a lot of relief programs out there to help you out. Restaurants are the backbone of the whole country, backbone of the whole economy, so they're not gonna let you collapse and they understand that as restaurant owners, we operate at the thinnest margins, which is the reason why they have a lot of programs to help us out. For example, US has a $2 trillion CARES Act and more than $350 billion for a federal small business loan program. They have a paycheck protection program, which can cover payroll costs, mortgage and rent payments, healthcare benefits, employees, including paid sick leave. In Canada and Vancouver, we also have this 75% wage subsidy provided by the government as well, which is the reason why you should try your best to make sure that you keep your employees employed if you can, even for delivery services. And at the same time, we also have these mortgage deferral programs. So if you're renting from a landlord, make sure that you bring this conversation up with your landlord and express to them your concerns. So then that way they can work hand in hand with you because your success is their success. If you are out of business, they're gonna be out of business and they're gonna be looking at a place that's gonna be no rental income at all for years to come. The second way that you can survive this whole coronavirus is to analyze your business health. Analyze your business health to, uh, to make sure you understand all the numbers, understand how much of a long runway that you have when you are to close off your restaurant, close off all the operations and only pay for rent. And that would be your sunk cost. Or calculate it if you're running one person, two people, three people, or delivery only services. And that way you understand how long you can last throughout this whole coronavirus and this whole epidemic. If you do not know the runway, if you do not know how much cash you can spend or how long you're gonna last, then you have no clue what kind of relief programs you're gonna be needing to sign up for or whether it's better yet to just close off the business altogether or are you gonna be able to live to fight another day? Four, and just because you're closing down doesn't mean you're admitting defeat. It could just be reserving all your ammunition and reserving all your cash flow to make the comeback. Just like how even Michelin star restaurants like An Alina is even doing delivery services only. So having said that, don't be shy to close off your restaurants just so then that way you can live to fight another day. Make sure you understand the business health of your business. If you guys are wanting to understand the business health in more detail, make sure you guys check out this video right here. That's when I'm talking about how do you analyze the business health of your business and um, we go into very thorough detail of all the different points that you should consider. The third way to survive this whole virus is to get listed. There are a lot of publications out there that list restaurants that are still doing delivery as a service model only. So make sure that you guys reach out to these publications within your city to make sure that you get your restaurant out in the public to let other people know who to support and how they can support you. Because as citizens, we all want to be able to support all these local small businesses to help them survive. And that's what I'm doing. That's what a lot of my friends are doing as well. So if you guys are still operating as a delivery service only, make sure you guys get listed on these different platforms, leverage their readership, leverage their database. If you guys are getting any value whatsoever from this video, make sure you smash the like button because it just shows me that this is the type of content you want. Now back to regular programming. 
The fourth way to survive this whole coronavirus is to turn your restaurant into a grocery store. I know that sounds a little bit far off, but hear me out. A lot of people are actually waiting hours in line just to grab that last carton of milk, last carton of eggs. Yet, if you're able to transform your restaurant into a temporary grocery store where you still have the logistics and you still have your suppliers that bring in and deliver all these staple items to your restaurant, you can open up doors to your neighborhood so then that way they can come in and grab all the essential items. Not only are you able to be able to benefit from making some money in order for you to cover rent, but also you're able to build that community base around you. They're gonna be thankful that they don't have to trek for hours, for like tens of minutes just to go to the grocery store and then wait for lineups. They can just come to your store, which is much closer, much more convenient, pick up the staple items and get going. So when the times are better, they can come back to support you. And now you're building a real community. On the same note of being creative, the fifth note to survive this whole coronavirus is to reuse your dining space. Just because you're out of business, just because you don't wanna do grocery market, does not mean you can just leave this space empty. You can do so much with it. Turn it into a studio, turn it into a YouTube studio and start teaching people how do you cook your master dish and your recipe and show people the behind the scenes stuff. Be creative with this so then that way you are still nurturing your community. Don't just stay at home and just be like stressing about not being able to pay for rent and this and that. Be creative with the space that you have. Be creative with the audience that you have and start building the brand and start building this community because this is the time to do so. The sixth way to survive this whole coronavirus is to make sure your web presence is on point. A lot of times when you're working in the restaurant business, you're putting out fire after fire after fire. That means you're working in the business. This is a time to work on the business, work on stuff that you can control. Make sure you optimize your website. Is the menu most up to date on your website? Is your contact information on your website? Is your social media on point? Is it all congruent? Is it all aligned? Make sure everything is intact. Make sure that everything is most up to date. Make sure that you start communicating with your audience and then that way you can build that brand awareness. Whereas when your shop opens, you just don't have the time to deal with that. Now's the time for us to work on the business because everyone else is sleeping, you're working on the business. So when times are good again, you are gonna be right in front of everyone else. The seventh way to fight this whole coronavirus and to make sure that you are gonna be intact after this whole pandemic is over is to start a DIY kit. A lot of my friends are actually doing that and they're seeing tremendous amount of success with it because everyone's home, everyone wants to be able to do something because they can't go out anymore and they can only eat so much takeout, which is the reason why DIY kits are so popular now because Basically, you have all the ingredients, you package it in a way that is nice and that is transportable. You send it to them, send them the instructions, and people are gobbling up these DIY kits like no tomorrow because they just wanna have an activity to bond with their other half, and now they have something to do. So think about creative ways of packaging your recipe and your goods, pre-make the sauce, pre-make everything, and just give it to them. Make it super, super simple for them to make that DIY recipe that is signature to your restaurant. After this whole thing blows by, they're gonna have that much more attachment to your brand. So there you go, the seven ways that you can outbeat this whole coronavirus with your restaurant. So then that way you can come out on top. Number one is to check with your government officials and your government relief programs. They offer a ton of things to support you because you are the backbone of this economy. Second way is to analyze your business health, understanding how much more lifeline you have, understanding when is it that you need to call quits, understand all your numbers, so then that way you can be proactive and not reactive to circumstances. If you guys want more about this, make sure you guys check out this video. Once again, I talk about it in depth about how do you analyze your business health. Third way is to get listed on local directories because a lot of different publications are featuring companies and restaurants that are still open during this pandemic and offering delivery services. So make sure you guys get listed with these publications. Fourth way is to be creative and to turn your restaurant into a grocery store because a lot of people are still going to grocery stores lining up for hours. If you can have all the staple items at your store and turn it into a temporary grocery store, you're gonna be able to create that loyal fan base. 
The fifth way is to make sure that you are being creative with your space, whether it be turning it into a studio and turning it into an educational YouTube channel so that way you can shoot content to share it with your community. Whatever it is, you are still building a lot of more brand awareness and a lot more brand loyalty to your community. Number six is to make sure your online presence is on point. Start working on your business instead of working in your business all the time. Now's the time to do that because after this whole pandemic is over, everyone's gonna go out and eat because they need to go out of their doors. And finally, have DIY kits. DIY kits are on the boom and on the rise because a lot of people want to do something with their other half. So if you have the ingredients there, if you, all, if you have your special signature sauce done, package them all together, put it out there for sale, and a lot of people will buy into that. So there you go. I really hope that you can come out of this unscathed, but unfortunately I know a lot of you are stuck in a really, really bad pickle. So if you have any questions whatsoever, I'm gonna be here for you. I'm gonna be answering all your questions to the best of my capability to help you out. So if you have any questions, make sure you guys leave in the comment section below and I will answer to every single one of them because that's just my way of giving back to you. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe along the journey and I'll see you guys in the next video.